Good day, Delaware National Guard, and welcome to the March 2015 edition of the DNG News. Coming up in this month's edition, SBI Duncan Leadership Award winners, the Chambers Cup champions, and the 32nd Annual Prayer Breakfast. As we do every February, we presented the Colonel SBI Duncan Leadership Awards. This year, the award went to Specialist James Boyer of the 261st Tactical Theater Signal Brigade and Senior Airman William Paskey of the 166th Logistics Readiness Squadron. The award recognizes a traditional soldier and airman for their outstanding performance in leadership, devotion to duty, support of recruiting and retention, and their ability to accomplish their mission. Congratulations, Specialist Boyer and Senior Airman Paskey. The UTA also saw two new commanders take the helm. The 166th Logistics Readiness Squadron held a change of command as Lieutenant Colonel Robert Howard stepped down and Lieutenant Colonel David Rice stepped up. Colonel Rice comes from the Network Warfare Squadron and Colonel Howard now becomes the Wing Inspector General. But wait, there's more. Filling a vacancy since the retirement of the past commander, the 166th Medical Group held an assumption of command for new Delaware Air National Guard member, Colonel Peter Bickle. Colonel Bickle is a renowned optometrist and came out of individual mobilization augmentees at Joint Base Andrews to take our med group to the next level. Years ago, Father Dan Garris, an Army National Guard chaplain, started a prayer service the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday, the start of the Christian season of Lent. Over the last 32 years, the prayer service evolved into a breakfast, including people of all faiths. This year, Sergeant Major Jim Snyder played the piano, the Delaware National Guard choir performed, and Major General Nadja West shared her compelling story with everyone. Not even the snow could keep this year's breakfast from being the best one ever. Speaking of snow, ever wondered how we get snow and ice off of aircraft that are 97 feet long with a wingspan of 132 feet? Here, let me show you. It's called a de-icer, but as you can see, and here, it's really an industrial hair dryer. A three-person team works to blow the snow off the bird with one of the team up in the boom getting the great view. The 166th Aircraft Maintenance Squadron is responsible for ensuring aircraft are ready to fly no matter what the conditions. Hey, you know who's ready to fly? While well, it's our Adjutant General, Major General Frank Vavala, with this month's Frankly Speaking. General Vavala, what would be the effect on the Guard if sequestration is not vacated? Pretty devastating. In fact, in Delaware, we would uh, stand the potential of losing two units with the uh, full-time manning to go with them, along with all the uh, traditional M-Day uh, slots. So it could be pretty devastating for us. And if you look at it from a, from a holistic National Guard standpoint, we can go down from our present the uh, manning level of about 350,000 soldiers down to 315. So, you know, talking about taking the, uh, the operational punch out of the guard, that would uh, essentially stick us back on the shelf as a strategic reserve. So from my perspective, sequestration would be devastating. And really from a Department of Defense perspective, since and sequestration, half of the cuts are, are going to be out of the Department of Defense. So it's, it would be pretty devastating to our national interest as well. You are very active with your colleagues, the 53 Adjutants General. What are the issues that worry them the most over the next few years? Well, you just uh, hit on one, sequestration, obviously, but that goes hand in hand with what the Army is essentially trying to do and taking our, our manpower down. Uh, you know, in the war, we, we're, the Army understands that they need our Army National Guard and they can't perform their missions without us. Well, when we start to draw down and we start to cut resourcing like these overseas contingency operational funds, these OCO funds, then then we're, we're back in a uh, position where, okay, who gets resourced? Well, the Army obviously wants to resource themselves first before they take care of the Army National Guard. 
So from that perspective, uh, they're trying to bring us down in strength from about 350 to 335, which essentially will take a few of our brigade combat teams out. And uh, also tied with that is the Army's ill-conceived idea to remove all of our combat aviation from our Army National Guard. So uh, the, all of those things go hand in hand. On the air side, we're very concerned about being able to modernize our C-130 fleet. So from Delaware's perspective, that's the other big issue that we're contending with. If we're not able to get the, uh, the uh, cockpit modernizations, our avionics modernizations by 2020, uh, we would essentially not be able to fly outside the continental United States, which would essentially, again, put us on the shelf, take us out of the war fight, make us irrelevant. Thank you, sir. Again this year, four-man teams gathered at the River Road training site for the Chambers Cup three-gun marksmanship match. Nate's story is right on target. Take a look. Let's go! There's a lot of puffing and puffing at the Chambers Cup marksmanship competition. That's one of ours. Come on, bro. Marksmanship being a key component to what we call the profession of arms, Delaware Army National Guard soldiers are here in the muck and mud of the River Road training site in order to compete in the second annual Chambers Cup Marksmanship Competition. The competition involves three events this year. It begins with the Patton Pistol Match, which is a 300-yard run followed by firing a 9mm at paper targets. The second event is the Bianchi battle. Competitors, on your mark. This again Get involves set. a timed run. Go! Then firing a rifle at different distances in different positions, including at moving targets. All parts of the cup are a team competition, so sticking together and helping one another are part of the game. Get that last one to kick out. Rocket, hey, slow down, aim. There you go. The cup is named for the Delaware Army National Guard's previous one star, Scott Chambers. Well, we know uh, General Chambers, he's uh, he's avid hunter. He's, uh, marksmanship has been very important to him. When he when he uh, took over as the Assistant Adjutant General, he uh, emphasized marksmanship, and we just wanted to uh, have a marksmanship competition in his name. To keep things interesting, a final event changes each year. This year, that is shooting what is called a Texas Star. Participants get a lot from the day. Oh, it's just a challenge to see uh, how our how our shooting is, how it's progressed from when we started from back at basic, and it's pretty much just fun. I love and I love participating in all these types of events. Oh, plus it's always happy to bring home the gold for our unit. We want to represent 261st and bring back the cup for for our unit. It was a chance to get out of the actual like office and get out here and uh, spend some time and do something we all love to do, which is shoot. So. Great uh, marksmanship training. Watch and shoot. Watch and shoot. Uh, this and any of the competitions, 
builds their confidence, builds their skill levels in marksmanship. Uh, like I said, average unit before we had Chambers Cup, before we had Governor's 20, really pushing it. You get maybe what, once a year to shoot, to come out zero, qualify, and then go back to doing your MOSs. Gets more time. It's a key skill for a soldier, and you need to be able to shoot. Reporting from River Road, I'm Air Force Staff Sergeant Nathan Bright. Before we go, here's Officer Candidate McDougal with the weather. Hopefully, the bitter cold weather is behind us, but we'll see if March comes in like a lion or a lamb. One thing you can be sure of, there is 100% chance of leprechauns. Well, that's all we have for this month. Don't forget to save the date for the military ball on May 16th.